This Lido Kala LII 500S has some pretty interesting features that you won't find on all battery chargers. I do an unboxing of this and talk about those features coming up on Thrifty AV. Before purchasing the LII 500S, I already had two battery chargers. I had this Nightcore IntelliCharger, it holds two cells. And I have this Lido Kala LII PD4. This has a few more features. It holds four cells and it'll show you how much charge it puts in each cell. But this Lido Kala LII 500S has a lot more features than that. Hey, this is out of the box. Let's back this up and show you the unboxing. Looking at the outside of the box on this Lido Kala LII 500S, it uh, accepts a wide range of battery sizes and uh, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, or NICAD. It has this fast charge feature which will do up to two amps per hour. That's not with all four of these occupied. That would be with just uh, one or two, I'll find out in the instructions. And it says it's intelligent and safe with multi-protection function, overcharge and discharge, short-circuited, over-temp, anti-reverse, uh, safe timer, bad battery identify, I like that. Okay, here's the specs on the input and output. Let's get into this box. Okay, here's the instructions, here's the English, warnings, features, modes, and I'll read over this later. Okay, it does come with a car charger, that's nice, I didn't expect that. Alright, I was worried for a second, this power adapter is for a US plug. Here is the charger itself. Do we have plastic here? Plastic peeling. Peeling plastic is always fun. Made a little beep when I plugged it in. No, because I don't have anything plugged into it. Here's a cool feature. It has a 5 volt USB power port so you can charge your cell phone off of this charger. With lithium batteries, I can run the current in each battery from 500 milliamps to two full amps, as long as I'm only charging up to two lithium batteries. If I put a third or a fourth battery in here, then it limits it to one amp per battery. With nickel metal hydride or NICAD, the limit is one amp per battery. Here I have four 18650 lithium ion batteries. When I put a battery in this channel here, I have three modes to pick from. I can charge the battery, I can discharge the battery, or I can test the battery. I'm going to go ahead and do a test on this battery and I can change the current. Right now it's at 500 milliamps. Okay, it's locked into 500 milliamps because my test has already started. So, if I'm going to change that, I need to change it quickly. I've changed it to 2000 milliamps. And I'm going to do another one. Mode test 2000 milliamps and that test is blinking when that test goes solid it's locked in I can't change this now I'm going to put another one in change it to test now I will not be able to do 2000 milliamps because it can only do two batteries at that current. And once I inserted this third battery, 
This one dropped from 2000 milliamps to 1000 milliamp, and so did this one. Now I'm going to insert a fourth battery. After eight seconds, this te blinking test will go solid, and I am locked into a test. So I'm testing battery one, I'm testing battery two, I'm testing battery three, I'm testing battery four. It will fully charge all four of these, and then it will discharge all four of these, and then it will charge all four of them again, and I'll be able to see the actual capacity on all four of these 18650s. It's been about 30 minutes. Channel one is discharging. Channel two is still charging. Channel three is discharging. And channel four is discharging. The channels that are discharging 1, 3, and 4 are discharging at a current of 500 milliamps. I did notice something kind of weird when I'm in test mode. Right now I'm looking at what channel 1 is doing and when I hit channel 2 it does nothing. When I hit channel 3 it does nothing. When I hit channel 4 it does nothing. So it got stuck on channel 1 while it's doing its test mode and I can't look at what the other channels are doing right now. While I wasn't recording, I managed to get it switched over to channel 4 to display it. It's also still discharging. And at 500 milliamps, these discharges are pretty slow. We've been going 2 hours and 52 minutes on the test on channel 4 here. I'd show you the other times if I could get... Oop, oop, it's working. Channel 1 We've been going 2 hours and 43 minutes. Channel 2, we've been going 2 hours and 38 minutes. I cannot switch to channel 3. Channel 4, we've been going 2 hours and 52 minutes. Hopefully all four channel buttons will work when it starts recharging again. We'll see. I've set this on top of this uh, stainless steel pan to act as a heat sink because uh, I think the heat was what was causing the buttons to not respond. Channel 1 discharging, channel 3 is charging, channel 4 is charging, here's channel 2, it's discharging. I'd like to point something else out. I'm on channel 2 here and it is still discharging on this channel. And this timer is 4 hours and 14 minutes. Now I've switched to channel 1 and this timer appears to have started over when it started recharging. So that is actually 18 minutes. This is the 19 minutes. This is the time for the recharge. So this little timer times each portion of the test. It times the initial charge, it times the discharge, and then it times the recharge and it resets during each phase of the test. I've dimmed the light so you can see something else. Everything is finished except for channel 2 and channel 1 has a green light, 3 has a green light, 4 has a green light, 2 has a red light. I'm on channel 2 right now and it's showing 1 hour and 38 minutes. That's how long this has been recharging. Okay, switching to channel 1, it says 3 hours and 56 minutes. That is the total time for the whole test. So that's how long it took to charge it fully, discharge it, and then recharge it fully. This time lapse shows channel 2 finishing up. And in a second, you'll see the timer go from 2 hours and 43 minutes to 4 hours and 30 minutes and that verifies that it goes from the time of just recharging to the total time of the test. Now I want to talk about rated capacity compared to actual capacity. These green Samsungs here are rated at 2500 milliamp hours. Uh, this one in channel 1 had 1971. Channel 2 had 2251. Now these are older batteries. I've used them a lot. So that's why these are not meeting their actual capacity. These two batteries, I don't know the name brand, but you can see that they're rated at 2000 milliamp hours. 
Channel 3 is showing 1924, that's pretty close. And channel 4 is showing 1946, that's even closer to the rated capacity for those two batteries. So this is a pretty cool feature that can actually tell you if your batteries have the capacity that they're supposed to. In an earlier video, I tested AA rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries using flashlights as my discharge devices. Well, with this battery charger, I don't need to use flashlights anymore because this will discharge for me and it'll do it more precisely. So you can expect a future video comparing different brands of nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel and remember, stay thrifty everyone.